I'm the Baghdad blogger and I'm back. But this time I'm blogging not from Iraq but from the UK. While I left Iraq to study, more than two million Iraqis fled our country to escape the violence. Only a tiny percentage came here to the UK to apply for asylum and most have been refused. Up until now, failed asylum seekers have still received benefits while the government considered traveling to certain areas in Iraq unsafe. Today, the headline of the Herald Tribune says there is a new sense of stability in Iraq. And it seems not only this paper, but a lot of people think that Iraq is turning to the better in terms of security and safety. Even the British government thinks this way. Despite the continued violence in Iraq, they've been sending people back since August 2005, mostly to Kurdistan, this northern region, while central and southern Iraq, here, were still considered too dangerous. But now the government is saying that all of Iraq is safe to return to, if you go back voluntarily. So, if your asylum claim has failed and you don't sign up to go back, housing and benefit are taken away, it's making people destitute. I wanted to go and talk to some Iraqis from central and southern Iraq who are facing this choice. Dr. M is a surgeon from Kirkuk. He wants to stay anonymous as he fears for his safety. He first claimed asylum in 2000, but has been turned down several times. I live in a very hopeless situation, which is very, very hard. I don't have anywhere to live. I don't have my own roof to live in and and I currently I don't have any benefit so sometimes I obliged to work illegally as a cleaner imagine a doctor work as a cleaner after the invasion his asylum claim was rejected he was told there were several places in Iraq considered safe enough for him to go back to I went back voluntarily to my country and as home office told me at that time, your country is safe. There's a government which can protect you. But the Iraqi state wasn't able to protect anybody, and his family were killed in the ethnic violence of post-war Iraq. Frightened for his life, Dr. M went to the police for protection. Police said, we are targeted every day, so we cannot protect ourselves. So how can we protect ordinary people? So what can we do for you? I am sure if I go back, I would be killed. I see my future very, very black because I don't have any hope, no, not here, neither in my country. And if that government wants to, to send me back to my country, I prefer to be killed here rather than be in my country. Thousands of Iraqis are in the same situation as Dr. M. I wanted to check out the numbers. Look at the figure for humanitarian protection. That's people who have been refused asylum but can demonstrate they're still at risk of unlawful killing and inhuman treatment. In 2003, 2,155 Iraqis were granted this protection. Last year, only 15 got it. To me, this seems a very low number when Iraqis are still dying from car bombs and suicide attacks. I've been told that a lot of asylum seekers are sent up north, so uh, that's why today I'm going to Manchester, hoping to find a couple more Iraqi asylum seekers to talk to. Um, I've been given uh, a couple of phone numbers, locations where restaurants and shops where they work illegally, but the problem is these are people who have fallen off the radar and they wanted to stay that way. When I arrived in Manchester, I headed straight to the heartland for Iraqi refugees. Or at least it felt like it. I was on my way to see Mehdi, a Shia from Sadr city in Baghdad. You just sort of lead the way. He married a Sunni girl, but her family didn't approve and she was murdered. Until Mehdi fled here on the eve of the invasion in 2003. This is your room. Was my room. It's not anymore? No, not anymore. Where are you living now? Well, actually, in a particular 
a house, I'm moving. A few weeks ago, he received a letter from the Home Office. When Iraq will be safe, and they will send me back. Yes. But the Iraq not safe yet. And they send me a letter, if you don't do anything further to go back to Iraq, mm -hmm. we will stop support you and cancel the accommodation and cancel the money. Having failed as an asylum seeker, the government has so, given so Mehdi what do, what do two options. Really, um... Going back to Iraq to be killed or staying here, living straight. They just cut off your yeah, benefits. Just stop support me. So they can't really... Just to make me think to go back to Iraq. Mehdi thinks this is a deliberate government policy. They push, they push the people to go back to Iraq. Make our country safe. We will go back. Because Mehdi's benefits have been stopped, it means he won't be able to go to college anymore. Today is his last day. I've been going to college five years. I well, actually give my life action. Or well, now, I don't know how I'm going to spend my day. Can't tell what will happen in the future. Mehdi has made his choice because he's too afraid to go home. But for those who can't face destitution, their only option is to sign up to return voluntarily. It's a difficult decision to make. I'll do you a college letter. You should be fine. It shouldn't be a problem. When? When we see you today. 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 One person to help them, at least with the paperwork, is Tony Openshaw at the voluntary organization ASHA. Kelly, your support has ended because your asylum claim has come to an end. So, um, Khalid, where, where have you been living since the 23rd of May? Just moving around from friend to friend, okay. I hardly know any Iraqis who want to go back. Every now and again you'll meet somebody who's frustrated because of the situation in the, in the UK, not allowed to work, no benefits, you know, living rough, living with friends, yeah. they get very frustrated and they want to go back. Khalid has occurred from Kirkuk and has been destitute for months. I have to go back because I have many problems here. Khalid, we can help you. He's come to sign up for a voluntary return. This will restore his benefits, or Section 4, as they are known. Whilst you're waiting for the arrangements to go back, we can get accommodation for you. This is called Section 4, and you'll get vouchers. It's £35 a week to buy food. Do you think that when you help them do that, encourage them to do that, to get some benefits, that you're sending them back to their death? It's a very difficult question. Um, sometimes, yes. When Iraqis elect to go back, I have to accept it's their personal choice. I have to do it with a heavy heart sometimes. I can't recommend you to go back. It's, it has to be your choice if you want to go back to Iraq or not. If I had the right to work, I wouldn't go back. If I had somewhere to live, I wouldn't go back. But I have nothing in this country, so I'm forced to go back to my own country. Hassan, I need Khalid to sign here. This is to say that he wishes to return to Iraq of his own free will and that he's willing to be returned. It might be months before Khalid has to return to Iraq, but until then, at least he will have his weekly food voucher and a roof over his head. Okay. Okay. Do you think the, the UK government is actually pushing more and more asylum seekers into signing voluntary returns? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a, a deliberate policy generally for the government to try and get asylum seekers to return home. As regards destitution, they've made that a deliberate policy. Yeah. They, they make people destitute and argue it's not a breach of human rights uh, to be destitute. You can always return home to your country. So it's not a breach of human rights. And there are people living in the UK now who are in absolute destitution because of deliberate policy.
After meeting half a dozen Iraqi asylum seekers, I found they were all convinced they would be killed if they went home. I do feel they are being put in a very difficult position by the government because I don't think my country is safe. Although Iraq might be turning a corner and the situation might be getting better, it's just not there yet. So maybe just give them a little bit more time because we need these people to rebuild our country.